let's turn to the salvage setting because I, you know, there was some data at ESMO this year that I, I think has, has been building and, and, and there was some at, at Astro. And, and, and Joe, walk us through a little bit of that data and how it's shaping our thinking be, behind sort of adjuvant versus salvage radiotherapy with or without these hormonal therapies. Yeah, I mean, there, there has been controversial data up till now with regards whether adjuvant radiotherapy or salvage radiotherapy is the way to go in patients who have either high risk of recurrence after a radical prostatectomy or in whom to develop a, a, a PSA or a biochemical recurrence. So we had two sets of data at the ESMO meeting here in Barcelona. We had the uh, uh, interim analysis of the RADICALS trial, which is really the, the largest trial. It's uh, nearly 1,500 patients from UK, Ireland, uh, Denmark. And that was presented by Chris Parker. And we also had a very nice meta-analysis presented by the Medical Research Council, uh, Claire Vale. And she brought together three trials. She looked at data from RADICALS, mm -hmm. but also from a TROG trial and a JETIC trial. And really tried to bring together, really tried to bring the data together to try and give a, a sooner answer. Because the real challenge with these patients is actually the surgery works pretty well, yeah. and the recurrence rates of the number of events or the frequency of, of events is really quite low. Mm -hmm. So to, it takes a very very long time for these data to mature. We're seeing five year results from from, from um, <coughs> radicals, and then the the meta analysis was helping us to really bring the data together. The conclusion was, so previously we, there, was, there was some conflicting evidence. There was an EOR trial 22991, which suggested a benefit of adjuvant radiotherapy versus weight. But actually this data presented at ESMO tells us that actually there doesn't seem to be much difference between immediate radiotherapy versus waiting for the recurrence and then treating the recurrence. So if you, especially if you have a low threshold for when you decide to do the salvage radiotherapy. So in Radical's trial, it was two consecutive rises above 0.1. That's really very, very early salvage. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I think that's a very important factor. Some of the earlier data, whether it's for some of the retrospective data, some of the patient's PSA was well into whole numbers. Right. And I think that's, a, that's not really salvage. You're, right. You really missed the chance. So what was really interesting about this was if you really follow the patients properly mm -hmm. and have a, a low threshold for starting salvage, then you are able to de-escalate treatment in quite a lot of patients. And that's very important. Because not surprisingly, the patients who were randomized to receive immediate or adjuvant radiotherapy had more side effects. Because, well, first of all, they were having radiation closer to the time of surgery, so perhaps there wasn't full recovery from the surgical complications. And secondly, more patients were being exposed to radiation. That's right. Now, there are some controversies within this. I think the radicals data is not yet fully mature. And certainly, it will be a very, very long time before we see a survival difference, if, if ever. Right because of subsequent therapies, et cetera. But to me, I think it has given me great reassurance that early salvage is the best approach. It means that quite a significant proportion of patients will not need radiation. And I think it was like 75%. Yeah. yeah. So, so it, I mean, this is the majority. Yeah. Them, so yeah. so I, th I think that's very important because we, we don't like over-treating patients. We just had the discussion about uh, active surveillance and we as doctors don't like doing harm. So if we can get away without doing a therapy, I think that's what we should be trying to do. So I, I'm, I'm reassured by the data. I think the meta-analysis was also very powerful because it brought together th three trials designed around the same time with fairly similar inclusion criteria and fairly similar salvage uh, um, 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 protocol. So I think I'm pretty reassured now that we can safely get away with salvage. I think it would be interesting to see the data mature, but I honestly don't think we're going to see much change over time. And I, I really think that the concept of adjuvant radiotherapy, it's, it's, well, for, at least for the patients described in this risk category. Within the data, there will be some devil in the detail because there are some patients perhaps at higher risk of recurrence than others, of course. Mm -hmm. In the radicals trial, you, you were considered high risk of recurrence if your PSA at baseline was 10 or above, your gleason was 8 or above, you were T3, you were positive margin. But that describes very different disease. You know, a, f a focal positive margin may have very, very low risk of recurrence. However, at least an eight might have a much higher risk. Yeah. Uh, so I think, and also the PSA level at baseline is quite a variable as well. I mean, I know it does predict for a higher risk, but there's not much difference between PSA of five or six and PSA of 10, in my view, with regards to recurrence post-surgery. And then, of course, the quality of the surgery, the, the, the quality assurance of the surgery. It's, it's difficult to monitor that in this right. kind of study. Right. So, right. so can I interject? Is, yes, so I, what I'm hearing Joe talk, and it's really interesting, and it's a, it's a great evolution uh, of treatment, um, I'm beginning to think about testicular cancer and how we began to reduce the in treatment intensity. Because here you're saying clearly there are patients who benefit from 
radiation therapy, we, that's established. But now we begin, to, we need to ask the question, who are the patients who won't benefit from radiation therapy from, for whom are, we are over-radiating? And so the question is, what parameters can we use, whether it's PSA doubling time, obviously uh, novel imaging, or baseline factors that we can say, not that this patient uh, is going to benefit from radiation, but that this patient already is likely to have systemic disease. And we as medical oncologists and, and those who treat advanced disease, we all have these patients in our practice who got radiation, recurred and developed metastatic disease anyway, and maybe they're still suffering from the side effects of their radiation. So, you know, we need, the test is cancer analogy is to say, how can we figure out how to de-escalate some of this treatment? And are we moving in that direction? Can I jump in on one thing? A major epidemic of PSMA PET to imaging in these patients. So I 100% agree with everything, Joe, that you just said. Yep. But we need to counter the notion that let's wait, let the PSA rise a little bit yep. more yeah, I so I can get a PSMA PET and maybe find where the cancer is. Interesting, yeah, good point. Yeah. So message is, if you're gonna do salvage, do it early. Don't wait for the PSA to be 0.2 to send them to Scandinavia to go and get a PSMA PET from whichever country or wherever you can get it. Do what the standard of care shows, because with the earlier you institute the salvage, the more likely you are to cure them. Don't wait. The next thing is, and I don't know if we've got time to it, sure. what about adding, when would you put androgen deprivation into this mix? I was gonna ask that, because one thing radicals didn't really address was the, the hormonal therapy question. It they, they was there, it was allowed, yeah. but it wasn't a, a prescribed regimen per se. There are other studies that are really addressing this. Do you wanna summarize well, actually, that? There, there is a separate part of radicals, which is the hormone randomization. So I think the data presented here was pure radiation, yeah. but there's a subsequent randomization that if you were deciding to treat the patient, either they were randomized to adjuvant, or then they were receiving salvage, you could also then randomize them to receive no hormones, six months or 12 months hormones. So that data is, is, is yet to evolve. So we don't know that because obviously the, the biochemical recurrence data for that would be very much delayed because of the hormonal therapy. So I think that would be sub, there, 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 there will be subsequent data from radicals which will help us with that. But I think what we have right now is telling us that it's safe if you have a low threshold for when you do the salvage, it's safe to use PSA, and I totally agree with Chris that waiting for the PSMA scan to be positive is not the way to go. That's great.